everyone. I'm very excited here to be with these five amazing women. Um, this, uh, I, I know them for, for, for a long time, some of them, and some I don't know so much. Uh, this year we had, last year we had the, the honor of all being um, Wonder Women, women for, for LAMC, and it was a great honor that we received. And it is great now to be talking to all of them. And I, am, I have to admit that I'm very nervous because I really look uh, up to some of these women or to all of these women. And I really uh, think um, uh, their, their experience uh, is very, very valuable and positive for every woman that is uh, listening to, to us uh, in this uh, uh, conference. So uh, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, each one of you and maybe the, the, the best thing would be to, to start uh, in your own words to introduce yourself. So Maria Fernandez uh, from Sony Music, uh, can you uh, tell us who you are and how you're here? Thank you, Laura. Well, first of all, I wanted to, to thank the LAMC for the invitation to participate today in this panel. It's really an honor to be part of this. So answering your question, um, my name is Maria Fernandez. I'm a EVP COO for the Latin Iberia region for Sony Music Entertainment. I'm originally from Venezuela and I am based in the Miami regional office. Wow. Alicia, Alicia Arauzo. Hi. First of all, the same as Maria said, it's an honor. It's a, it's a pleasure to share this moment with uh, all these fantastic uh, women. Uh, I am general manager at uh, Universal Music Spain, I, of the division of records. And I thank you very much for this and representing, you know, the women, Spain, my company. Thank you very much. Sandra Jimenez. Hola. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an honor to be here. It's my first time attending this, this amazing panel. So I'm really deeply honored to be here. So um, I'm based in Brazil, I'm Brazilian, and I'm responsible for music at YouTube in whole Latin America. And uh, Gabi, Gabi Martinez. Hola, hello, hello everybody. I'm uh, very, very happy to be here. My name is Gabi Martinez, although in my, in my window it says Pratt, I didn't change that. <laughs> I'm very honored to be with all of you. I'm looking forward to sharing our experiences. And more than anything, I'm also very happy that a lot of other women and young girls get to see this because representation is everything. So thank you, LAMC, for having us. I am general manager for the US Latin company in Warner Music. And I've been there for quite a long time now. So I'm very, very Honored to be here. And finally, Gabi Gonzalez. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. This is a wonderful panel and a wonderful opportunity. Um, I am originally from, born in LA, but raised in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, I am the vice president of uh, US and US, US Latin and Latin America for ASCAP, the Performing Rights Society in the United States. Um, yeah, and thank you for having me. This is great. I didn't know, Gabi, that you were born in LA. I knew yeah. you were. Uh, I knew you from Argentina, and I didn't know you were born in LA. I left LA when I was seven years old, so yeah, I grew up over there. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'm very okay, old. and I'm uh, Laura Tesoriero, uh, and I work for the Orchard uh, for the last 17 years, and I'm uh, originally from Argentina, but I'm now in Miami, and I'm VP of Latin. Uh, and I'm so amazed of all, uh, starting from Maria, that she's a COO and she is in, as we call it, in the C-suite. Uh, and uh, having women in that is really, uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't surprise us. Really, it shouldn't surprise us. And the day that it, we're not surprised by it, uh, I think that we would be, we would have achieved something. But it still surprises us in a, in a very good way. So Maria, maybe we can start with you and you could uh, tell us how your, your way was uh, to get to, to that position, to the COO position, uh, being a woman in this uh, 
machista continent and uh, because it's I don't know I don't think it's a machista world it's more a machista continent the one we are right well I, I would say that uh, first of all I, I was very very lucky and and I know you know there's this whole imposter syndrome there but but I do think that uh, having the opportunities is, is something that uh, uh, you know, it's not not everybody gets them. Then also taking advantage of the opportunities is a very important thing. So most of my career has been in entertainment. I started it uh, at the Walt Disney Company. I worked there for 10 years. I worked, I started in Venezuela. Then I was transferred to the Miami regional office for consumer products. Then I was transferred to Buenos Aires, Argentina, where Argentinians will, will recognize the period. I was there from 1998 to 2000. So they probably understand why I, I then left the company and, and joined DirecTV, which was also in, in the inter entertainment world. Um, and then I, I got into the music business, I would say by chance in a way, like, you know, this is an industry in, in which most of the people it's developed from the industry and, and you try to hire within the industry. That was not my case. You know, I was in my job. I decided it was a good moment to make a change, got into monster.com, just put my resume, the resume there, not even a cover letter. 30 minutes later, I was contacted by the headhunter and the rest is history. So that's how I joined Sony Music. Uh, at that time, I was a senior director for finance. Um, and, and talking about how I got to my current position, um, I had amazing allies. I, I owe this position to Afo Verde, the, the CEO of the region. He has always been extremely supportive of women. I would say that under his leadership, we have seen tremendous change in that front. Uh, you know, when I joined the company before he became the CEO, I was the only one in, in sort of the executive uh, group at a regional level, but uh, during the, the more than 10 years that have been this, he has been in this position, uh, we've been able to, to see a lot more change. So to me, it's getting to this position, it's, you know, having opportunities, taking advantage of them, training yourself constantly to be ready for the next one. Uh, networking, it's to me another critical a point. So for the people that uh, are interested in getting to a, a C-suite type, type of position, hard work, it's very important. But knowing people, connecting with others, you know, it, that is also a critical factor to me. So, so that would be how my journey was into getting to this position. Thank you very much. It's very interesting uh, those words that you said about uh, getting the opportunity and taking it. Because sometimes we get the opportunity and because of the syndrome that we're going to speak later about this... Uh, uh, imposter say, syndrome. See, the imposter sy syndrome, uh, we don't take it. So it's both things. Both things are very uh, important. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Gabi, Gabi Gonzalez, because we have two Gabis in this yes. panel. So, <laughs> Gabi Gonzalez. Um, there have been uh, leadership uh, roles at performing rights societies for women, uh, uh, like in the in the like in the past, and and now you are uh, taking that role. And what do you think? Why do you feel that w women have been uh, able to reach these positions in in this uh, particular societies? Like more than in the the like it, more than it, in, in the uh, recording industry itself, right? You know, I really don't have a straight answer for that. Uh, we actually talked about it with the women in the other societies, with Celestia and Delia, a while back. Got together and said, "Hey, you know, we've been working for women forever. We are women in power, and all these panels are going on, all these things are happening, and we are not really asked about it." why do you think this happened but we've never really dove into it so i can't really speak about them um but um at ascap there's always been a lot of women in power we have our ceo our head of council our head of licensing our head of marketing head of rhythm and soul myself there's a lot of women in power there um 
I, it, it does, what's really great is that it gives you a sense of empowerment and collaboration when you work with a lot of women that are high up. It's like you are, you know, it's, it's a really good spirit, a really good place to, to be. Um, but yeah, that has been historical at the societies. I don't have a, an answer as to why, but um, it has been a, a great thing because our experiences have been different as women in the industry. We have always been under women, um, and then we become, you know, um, the heads of the departments, and it's it's a good environment to be in. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I. I. Of course, I don't have the answer. That's why I asked it. But uh, I think that uh, the societies have to do a lot in collaboration. This, it, it's, it's not possible to, to, to work alone. It's not like a, a solo, a fly solo type of work. You need a lot of collaboration and, and uh, women, we are very good at that. I mean, I don't want to say men are not, men are too, but uh, like one of our characteristics is that we are, we are very good collaborating, right? So I think that Yeah, we need to um, nurture also our songwriters and, and help them grow and, and listen to them and, and, you know, make sure we connect with, with the creators. And so all that has to do with uh, just being supportive, being nurturing, you know, connecting. I just, it's, it's something that women are really good at. So I think that also has to do with it. Yeah, I think the, just... To, I would like to chime in a little bit. I think um, one of the characteristics that, that we have is empathy. Yeah. And empathy, I think, goes a long, long way because you are able to really connect with the needs of other people and you really try to find a middle ground. And I think that's one of the things that, as women, we bring to the table. You, know, I, you were mentioning why is it important to have women's women in certain positions of of, of decision making or this c-suite but i think it all has to do with bringing in perspective and complementing what you know what men can bring to the table so i i, I think empathy compassion are things that that really resonate uh, in the characteristics of of women no? yeah Alicia, and uh, you coming from Spain, yes. uh, in Spain, when do you think this uh, changed? When do you think that women started to get uh, in higher positions or in more uh, decision-making positions? When do you see, or how do you, did you see this change and when did you see it? Well, I think that like uh, 10 years ago, more or less, everything started, um, I, especially on the, on the record business. Uh, we have been the pioneers. I always say that there is like the pioneers that started in the in the in the record companies that they started working very 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 strongly with a lot of sacrifice in a lot of cases, and uh, I think that it came the moment in which that uh, positions were taken by female, uh, by women, uh, marketing directors, general managers. Uh, this more in the last five years, but I think that something that also made and change everything was like the new technologies. I think that when the new, the DSPs, for example, started and all these new platforms, they jumped with female uh, leadership. And I think that it changed the whole scenario and helped a lot because uh, on the record business, I still think that there is a lot of uh, very, very male oriented on the publishing side, for example, very male oriented in this, in this country. And, uh, and you can see more female on life management. Uh, and in the record industry, I would say that uh, it really helped that female scenario coming from the, also from the, from the new technology, technology uh, companies, uh, what we call the DSPs. And also I think that uh, the strong work from people that we have been for a long, long time working in the record companies, uh, we just built up. I mean, there was something that they say about the empathy. I would say that female, we bring also fidelity in one way. When a man starts in a record company or in a company, not a record company, they know I want to be the president, okay? I think that we start working. We don't think I want to be the president. We start working and working and our hard work and our sacrifice because 
a lot of people they have uh, they have not been able to make to create families or have children uh, has uh, you know make that movement and and that position and that strength that we bring in the company about that i i always say that we leave the colors it's like uh, we are part of the team it's like i am real madrid i have my white t-shirt no it's something like that for that's how how, how i feel it and and when i look through the major uh, companies here in the in, in Spain, they have been all of them have been, you know, like in Sony is Blanca or in Warner is Smart. They are people, they are women that have been working very, very much in the company for a long time. And I think it has been like a combination of both things. And now it's easier in a way. And it's because of this, because of the new new people. It's uh, but still there is a lot of work to do, I must say. Laura, can I jump in? Because I think in Latin America, in Latin America, we 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 are in a process, but I think we have a lot of work to do, right? So Alicia mentioned the DSPs, and it's interesting to see that the old DSPs we have a women in the command, and if you see a C level, a director, so YouTube, Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, right? If you see, there are a lot of really powerful uh, women who work on it. But we need to change the other side, uh, other sides of uh, side of the music business, mm -hmm. right? If you see right now for publishers, for instance, in in the region, Alexandra, I think it's the only one that is the president mm -hmm. or on the label. So, Gabby, Gabby Prati, uh, uh, Martinez, you are our you know, I'm trying. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but 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 you want, but I wanted to be to be to see more Gabby's and to Gabby for president, you know, and and everything because you don't see much, you know. I sometimes I have meetings uh, where I am the only woman participating and negotiate a deal. Right, and I think when we see, as Tizak, we we see women in 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 the power in C level positions in uh, as a president. You know, you bring more more women to your team. You are more open, right? To you know, to have um, a female team, and or you know, to to bring diversity. I'm very lucky because our music team at YouTube. Globally, we have a lot of women in power. You know, we have uh, um, uh, key positions when you have women leading. So this is, you know, it's it's it, it's it's inspiring inspiring me. You know, to grow it, to bring more women to to the table. Sorry that I jumped in, but but it's so important to see that in Latin America. We are growing, but we need more, you know, uh, yeah. focus on bringing 100%. more women to. Yeah, and, and I think that these level. type of things uh, help a lot and help a lot to, to uh, be more conscious about it. Because sometimes we take it for granted, we take it, it's like that. But we need to be conscious that we need to uh, uh, to show it. And this, these things are really good for that. And uh, how was it for you, Sandra, to, in a, such a big corporation as Google, to get uh, to be the head of music of Latin America. How was that? So, so uh, it's interesting because uh, I spent a, a bunch of years in my career at MTV Brazil, right? And I started in tech. My background is math, right? I, am, I was the nerd girl in the room, right? So, and, and it, it is really interesting because uh, I started at MTV in the IT team. It's interesting because we were a team of only women because at that time MTV was so progressive, you know, opened a lot of doors for, for a lot of people, especially in Brazil, right, because it, it's, basically everything uh, related to music started with MTV. But but it's interesting because I was working on IT and then I moved to uh, new, new business and digital. 
And when you start talk, uh, you know, working with uh, digital connected to music, it opened uh, a, a new world for me. And after MTV, I spent some time in a in a e-commerce, and then I decided to study. And then it was when uh, Google, in fact, it was YouTube. The old time that I I'm working for Google, I am at YouTube. And someone from uh, from that I worked before at MTV invited me to to come to to YouTube in Brazil. I started working with uh, TV broadcasters, not music. But after two years, the the responsible for music moved to LA, and I said, mm, "This is my heart. I need to work with music because." Your aha moment. Exactly, aha moment because when you work with music, there is a passion because music was my passion, right? And and Alvaro, that was this this director that said, oh, of course, I didn't know that you wanted to work uh, with music. Yeah, you know, I think, it, I know this is a hard business because it is, <laughs> you know, it's, it, sometimes it is challenging. And, and since then, uh, I started uh, Brazil only, and then I expanded to the whole Latin America for BD, business development. And now I'm responsible for all verticals, artists, labels, publishers in whole Latin America. So, but I am a nerd girl. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all. There's nothing nerd about you, Ms. Andrita. <laughs> yes. Oh, girl. And uh, Gaby Martinez, Gaby Martinez Prat, as we see here, Gaby Martinez. Uh, yeah. Um, how did you start it in Warner? ¿Cómo empezaste? Why? Yeah. When I actually my so my first 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 job in the music industry was a, in Warner in Mexico Warner Music Mexico, and um, I lasted for about a year. I didn't like my boss. I just said, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I was just coming out of college. Um, but the, the aha moment uh, that was for me um, it was before even Warner. I was working for a Televisa, which is the biggest TV network in Mexico. And I was still in college. And my only job was a production assistant was to go and pick up videos from the record labels. Remember the massive, you know, uh, three quarter inch videos. And I remember going into, at that time it was EMI. And I passed by a girl's office called Michelle Bourne, and I saw her with a big poster of U2 in back of her computer. Wow. She was working on an email regarding some U2 campaign, and I just thought, wow, there's actually a business behind music. And that's when I, my aha moment came in and said, whatever I do, I have to be a part of the YouTube campaign of the world or the whatever art is, I need to be a part of that. And Warner offered me a job after I was like, like I said before, I was in Warner for one year and I wasn't very happy. I didn't know what I was getting myself into because at the end of the day, the only reason any of us continue to be in this business is because we love music because damn, it can be very challenging and it has been very, very challenging for the last 15 years, we've gone through hell. And it's the only, the only reason we're all here is because we love what we do. But uh, so yes, so then I started working, I worked for Polygram, I worked for Universal in Mexico. And then I got the opportunity to come back to Warner back in 2001. And I, I came to the regional office um, and I've been here now for, with, almost 20 years and I love what I do. I've seen the transformation of the company in more ways than one. Now we have um, a head for Colombia is a woman, the head for Peru is a woman. Uh, in our office in Miami, the head of finance, um, the head of legal. I mean, we're mostly women. 
Actually, yes. we need to, we need to diversify to men. <laughs> <laughs> This is the best thing that I heard today. <laughs> We're leaving them out. No, no, no. No, but it's, it's you know, again, it's just it, that that has been the right people for those right positions. And, you know, I'm very proud to to, to be a part of, of, of a company that believes so much in women. And, and again, like I said at the beginning, representation is so important because once I saw there was this girl working on something that I saw myself being there, that's, yeah. you know, half of the job, half of the work done, no? Yeah. Having people that wants to, uh, you know, aspire to be in those positions is the most important thing because like Alicia said, you just get to work. Yeah. And you start growing and people recognize that, that, that you're doing, you're doing it right. You always have doubts. I think we're all insecure. As human beings, we're insecure, and this imposter syndrome is is very accurate. But I think it happens to everyone. Did Did anyone else have this uh, th has this aha moment clear as as Gabby has it? Because I think it's it's really interesting to see the like the aha moment. Does anyone have it uh, also clear, or should we go into the imposter syndrome right away? <laughs> Well, I, I, I come from a second generation, okay? My, my, my mother uh, worked on a company, uh, it was called Itpavox, by the way, it was a company what, that was bought by EMI. So when I was young, I came to work uh, in, uh, sorry, not to work, to play around. And so they were there. It, it's very funny because that company was based in the same city and sorry in the same street and number that we are right now at universal spain in madrid they brought down the building they rebuilt it and then once we moved we came to the same place that my parents worked and i was uh, and, I, and i was playing around on this area but it was not exactly as uh, gabby said but in a way it happened because uh, i was a dancer And I remember that uh, I studied in the States and I came back and my mother told me they are looking for people that speak English to go to translate to the artists in the radio. So I said, okay, I'm going to go there. And then I realized that I knew very much what was happening. And, uh, and, and I thought, I really like this. And it was not like, like uh, she mentioned, but I think that in a way, I realized that this is where I wanted to be because I wanted to be on this atmosphere. And uh, someone, I don't remember who, mentioned the word passion. I think that's basic in this, it's in this, work, in this world, where we are always working with passion. And, uh, and I think that is what the energy that we, we receive. I mean, we give a lot, but we receive a lot of energy. And uh, I think that's what really makes us, you know, keep going on this crazy world. <laughs> yeah. You know, I studied music um, and I wanted to be a musician. Um, that was my path, but I had to make a living. So I started answering phones at Peer Music. And then an opportunity arose to be part of the film and TV department doing syncs. Um, and I just went in there as an assistant, but I loved going to the Latin music concerts because that was my thing. And Catalina from Peer Music, since she was older, she was like, you go, you go, you go. And then that's when I realized I really want to work for Latin music. I'm not really a musician. This is the other side that I like. Amazing, amazing, great. <laughs> so going back to the imposter syndrome, uh, the imposter syndrome for those, uh, it's the idea that you only succeeded uh, due to luck and not because of your talent or qualifications. Uh, I think that we've all gone through that and uh, I want to, to ask you if you'd been through that and how how did you have how did you deal with that right and uh, and how did you overcome it maria i i i, I saw you nodding that's why I, yeah. yeah well if i may i think uh, you know no matter how hard we work we always have this thing that when an opportunity presents itself it's It's because you were lucky. You were in the right place at the right time. And that's, you know, that's why you got that, uh, that opportunity. And the reality is it takes a lot of hard work to be in the right place at the right time. 
<laughs> and uh, you need to have skills and you need to have uh, worked on developing yourself to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. But in, in several cases, at least it has happened to me, you, you get this no opportunity and it's like, okay, you have the courage to take it as, as we discussed at the beginning, but then it's like, okay, are, am I really prepared for it? Do I have what it takes? Do I know what I need to know to be effective and to be good at that, at that position? And that's the famous imposter syndrome. So, so I would say uh, we are, like most people will go through that. I will not say that everybody, but uh, especially when you have a change in a role, you always question a little if, if that is the, the right move, the right decision. But, you know, the, the famous fake it till you make it. And uh, if you are qualified, if you put the hard work, if, if you work, uh, you're a good team player. Uh, I think in most cases you, you can overcome it. But, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's really present. And uh, I've seen it a lot more in women than men. Uh, I think it's probably the, the background and the history. Uh, I don't see it that much in newer, like in, in younger uh, people. It's like they don't have that much of that. Uh, and I think that that's a good thing. That's an advantage. Uh, I remember that I was the, one of the structures of the company. I remember that they told me you are going to be the head of a label with what's Polydor. And I have a colleague that told me, I am going to say it in Spanish, okay? Él me dijo, estás preparada. Pero solo, solo tienes que creerlo. It's a little bit about what you are saying, that uh, we have our doubts. And only that sentence that he told me, you just have, you are prepared. You just believe, believe in you because you can do it. It made like the click and all the doubts and everything, it, it completely changed. I think what you mentioned, uh, Maria, is something that I think is very female thing because this is, has been discussions uh, internal discussions and, and it's something that it, it comes up. I, I, maybe I don't know, maybe I can't, I'm not sure if I'm prepared. And you know, I think that males, they never think, they always think they're prepared. They always think they can do it. And it is very female. And I am very glad what you said, because I, I agree hundred percent with you that the new generations, they don't think that way. It's like, uh, it's more secure. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the education they have received since, since kids or I don't know. But it's true that uh, that it's it happened. It happened to me, and I remember that colleague telling me this, and I completely say, "Okay, go." Yeah, but that's <laughs> that's why I I think it's so important that uh, you know this, this whole concept of women supporting women. Mm. You sometimes you just need someone to tell you, as you just mentioned, you are ready, you can do it, you will be successful. And then you can get out of, of the whole imposter syndrome. But, but and, and in most cases, it's a woman, the one that tells you that. It, it's not so often that it's a man, the one doing it. They can, and it, it works exactly the same way. But, uh, you know, talking about the importance of women supporting women, it's when you see this happening, it's just help someone by reinforcing the fact that they have what it takes, they are ready, and they can do it. And, and that changes everything, at least in my experience. I'd like to share something. And uh, I truly believe that you have to reinforce, you know, this power when you have a daughter, a young daughter, since they are, they are a kid. So when I was a kid, my dad always said I should be strong. Probably because I grew up in an Italian family with two sisters and uh, all my cousins. A lot of men, right? So uh, to be heard, I had to be strong. Otherwise, we would only play soccer, right? And I can hear my, uh, the vo uh, the, the, my, my dad's voice saying, do the right thing work hard and be strong. So, you know, this is so important when we uh, grow up thinking and, and seeing that you can be strong. That is, that is hard work. That's not lucky because you are there. 
and you have a lot of uh, insecurities sometimes, right? Because it, it's part of uh, of our essence, I think. But but the, the thing is, so you you think that you are lucky when you don't have the entire uh, picture of what's going on with you, you know. And, and it is important to reinforce this. That's why women bringing women together will can be stronger, right? Because of yeah. everything that he, that happened to your life. Yeah, I'm talking Completely. about women, women supporting women. Uh, there are so many uh, of these female-centric uh, peer organizations, like uh, uh, Women in Music or others like that. And I would like to ask you if you participate in, in any of those and if you see that they are important and if, if you would um, uh, advise uh, young women and other women to, to participate of those. In Spain, we have an organization called uh, uh, Mujeres de la Industria de la Música. Uh, I'm a member and it was born like five years ago. It works a lot with uh, to give visibility to the situation of the female collective of our music industry. Uh, they work a lot. They, they give, uh, how you say, uh, becas, uh, scholarships uh, for, you know, especially to help on areas where there's not that many women, like uh, um, sound technicians or a &R people, uh, and uh, because there is a very, very big gap, uh, and they're working also with festivals in the live business to try to push more female uh, artists on the festivals. So, and it's very, very active, working also with uh, government associations, international associations, working well. Yeah, I, I participate in women in music and, you know, whenever there's an opportunity to, to help or to do something, I'm, I'm all for it, full support. Um, I haven't, I do other, uh, you know, help in other ways, but as far as female centric is where I'm at. I also do, uh, she is in music um, with uh, women creators and women. Uh, yeah, it, it has a great um, uh, place where you can put in your information and people can look up, look for women to uh, include in their sessions, um, their engineers, producers, songwriters, artists, musicians. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, great. I mean, I think that women in music is, is amazing because they get, they put uh, women up, like they, they join women. And so this imposter syndrome, you, you just, uh, see that when you talk to other women and they are in the same situation, uh, because you, we, we, even if we, we say it now, then when we are alone, we say, yeah, but am I ready for, for this position? Or for... So we are, and I think that the, the, the main thing of being uh, insecure is, the, is also a, a good way to success because we are always doubting and thinking and changing. If we don't doubt, we don't change and we are, are stick on the same position. And I think that that uh, insecureness or, or or doubting in a point in a in a like not on the positive mucho, no mm -hmm. like, but on it is good uh, for us to change and that's why we are more permeable and we are we we are more uh, effective in change right yeah you push yourself more I think I think one of the main issues is uh, I think everybody's insecure I don't th I I I'm no psychologist <laughs> but. I just think that women tend to share it more, but I can almost guarantee that any man is insecure as well. It's just that they don't talk about it because that's not what men do. So that's kind of like the stereotypes, right? Um, but I think that for me, my insecurity would come more sometimes when I realize that I would have to scream louder in meetings scream or talk louder in meetings for some reason sometimes men don't look at you and i'm i'm sure they're not doing it out of being like disrespectful but i do remember being head of of marketing in universal in mexico and sitting down in a marketing meeting with you know 20 people out of which probably 
12 were men. And to make sure that they would listen to me, I would need to talk louder than necessary. And that gives you insecurity because you feel like you have to, you have to, you know, be louder, act stronger. And sometimes, and sorry if I say a bad word, but sometimes you feel like you need to act like a bitch to be heard. And it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. And I think that, that sometimes that's what gives you a little bit of insecurity. Like, do I have to be, you know, stronger? Because then if not, they feel like I'm weak, you know? So it's, it's a balance. It's a balance. And I think at the end of the day, you just have to trust your guts. You just have to work hard. And like Maria says, and, you know, just working hard, that's what pulls you through the day. Because at the end of the day, that's the only way that you can show that you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Don't do Gabby, I, I, I don't know. Uh, sorry, Sandra. Sorry. Uh, no, uh, my, uh, just a, a small comment. I think sometimes it's, we should be firm. You know, when you have a strong position, no a strong position, but uh, for women, you have to be firm when you're in an environment that is dominated by men. Yeah, right? but I also think when you feel yeah, when you feel comfortable, it's easier, right? Because you know the group. But sometimes you don't know the group, especially in Latin America. We have to, you know, to be firm. Sorry to interrupt to you <laughs> again. Don't worry, I yeah. thought you had finished. I'm sorry, but, but I, think, I think also it's uh, talking about the whole concept of speaking up. Um, I've seen it and I've seen it tons of times as, as Gabby just mentioned that you, you are in the middle of explaining something and someone jumps on top of what you're saying and you know talking louder than you uh, and, and the first reaction at least historically was just to shut up and let the other person continue talking and that doesn't work so, so to me it's one uh, and that's why sometimes you get this reputation of being you know like not the nicest, but if you were talking and someone is interrupting you, something as simple as, say, as saying, I haven't finished, and you can continue what you were saying, or you don't want to be confrontational for whatever reason, then having a conversation with that person after the fact and say, you did this, I didn't like it. Because in a lot of cases, the person that is doing that to you didn't even realize it. They are so used to you to do it that they don't know they are doing it. So you need yep. to bring it to their attention. Right. Like you're interrupting, especially the ones, because I've seen those cases that it happens mostly with women. So it's like you might have a bias here because you tend to be interrupting only the women in the conversation. You should be more careful. And, and in my experience, that has worked. It's like a lot of cases, the person doing it, doesn't realize what what he's doing so so I, I i also think we need to speak up when we see things we need to to yep. bring them to the attention of the person doing it that way they can be better if they were not aware and if they don't care then that's a different situation and it's a different conversation but at least you gave them the opportunity to to fix what they are doing if you don't say anything, then they will always have the excuse of not knowing what they are doing. I think that's a great piece of advice because I think there's a big bias there. And uh, I see that with men, like not with young men, but maybe with uh, older men. And uh, yeah, it, it's totally. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, you, you don't want to be rude and you. But yeah, it's, it's good having a conversation. I totally uh, agree on that. And uh I have a last question for everyone, and uh, I may be biased in this one, but uh, about mentorship. Uh, did you, were you, did you have any mentor in your career? I come from an independent, uh, from the independent part of the business because I had my record label in Argentina, so I was always very independent. But my question is because I see here in my colleagues in 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 the U.S that they, the, the mentorship, women are mentoring other women, is very, very common and it's, it happens all the time. And I think it's, it's amazing. And I would like to know 
if this was something uh, that in particular I didn't have or it's something uh, from Latin America and, the, and, and Spain, right? No, in Spain, like uh, I, what I understand happens there it, uh, in, in, or in the States, uh, I, I wouldn't say there's like a mentorship like that. I think that at the end, we, we, we find our mentors are, uh, along our career. Uh, personally, I, I, I have a person and that we have been coinciding along the year, which is Jesus Lopez, that we know each other for a long, long, long time. Uh, and he has been always, you know, uh, even if, 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 if we were not working together, uh, in a way, uh, how you say, directing or addressing the things and, and you know, saying you're doing this good or you're doing this bad. But, but like, uh, it's a, like uh, for example, if, if you ask me, are you mentoring someone? I would say no, as such, as a mentorship of one person. I work with the teams. I work with all the teams in the company. I work helping them with, with you know, trying to bring the best they have and trying to, to help them in, in taking solutions to their problems or giving them ideas. But I don't know if in the States is something very uh, popular or, or, or normal or regular. You, you know, you have like a mentorship, someone that you say, I'm going to be your mentor and I'm going to help you in your career forever. I, I hear it. I don't, it, it, it doesn't happen. It's like you, you find your people and, uh, yeah. and it, it, it's about the, how you say, the um, generosity of your colleagues to be your mentors. What about but the rest? In my case, I have to say that I had amazing mentors in my career. My first three mentors were spectacular women. And, uh, uh, and then I had amazing mentors in, in men uh, that, I, and I would say I would never be in this position without them and their support. And, and I see tremendous value in, uh, in being mentored and in providing mentorship. So for instance, at this point, I do work as a mentor for, for a number of female and male within the organization. I really enjoy it. It's probably one of the things I like the most about what I do, but I'm also being mentored by someone. So I think it's, uh, it's one of those things in which when you are mentoring someone, you also learn tons of things. It, it helps you. Uh, evaluate things about yourself. Uh, you learn tons of things about what's going on, uh, how how people are thinking. So so uh, I couldn't uh, recommend uh, mentoring and being mentored more. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be this very well organized program in which you are forced to meet a certain number of times per either month, year, whatever. I, I think it's. The, the way I do it, it's more in, in an as-needed basis. There are times in which I see the same person a couple of times per week, and then I don't talk to, to that person for two months or three months. So, But, but I, I see the value in, in the process. I think it's great for everybody involved in the process. And, uh, you know, anyone... Uh, people normally feel very honored to be asked to mentor. Uh, so if you want to be mentored by someone, ask. They might say no, but but you need to try. I just started mentoring someone that sent me a message in LinkedIn. So so you, you can do it. It's it's not uh, it's not such a complicated process. I think it's I think it's very very important. Um, I've had great mentors as well, women and men, for sure. Um, and I love, I love sharing my experience with my team. So whether it's you know male or female, I think it's 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 very important to to share your experience and have people you know learn from listening of of things that you've gone through. No, especially uh, the way our industry has changed so much in such little time. It's fascinating to share that with, with the younger generations of executives that are coming up. So it's definitely very rewarding. I think also yeah. when you're the, the head of a team, you have 
Uh, you always look for that that younger generation, that per next person that's going to come up. So you try to help that person um, get get into that position for you know for the future. I think that's kind of what we all do a little bit. For me, my what I would call my mentor would be Alexandra, who's now at Universal. She was my boss for so many years, and when I first started at ASCAP, I was a totally different person, and she really uh, helped me become the executive I am. So. That was a long, incredible experience. I definitely would, would like to mentor more people. So I am completely open to that if that, uh, the opportunity comes up. I agree, Alexandra is amazing. <laughs> anyway, so my mentor was uh, first week at MTV. I was pretty young and uh, I met the president of MTV in Brazil that was Fatma Ali, an amazing woman. And uh, I, I you know, when you see someone that you feel I'd like to be like her, and I and I and when you are young, you talk, 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 right? I, I said, so I'd like to to be as you know to have your approach to do what you do, and uh, and and he was uh, sorry, she was so uh, she was so surprised that I'd like to be like her. You know, and we created, you know, a really great connection. I spent 20 years of my life at MTV and we worked together for years and it was great. And I had amazing people that uh, men and, and women that, you know, I had the opportunity to work with and they were my mentors at Google. Uh, we have uh, women at Google and we have a formal mentorship program for all levels, so uh, I am a mentor in Brazil because, uh, you know, I spend, so in, 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 in on average, I spend more time in, in Brazil. <laughs> so uh, I am a mentor in Brazil, but at Google, you have all levels of mentorship. So there is um, uh, a place where you choose someone and in all levels, you know, vice presidents or women, men, and then you can apply and they talk to you. It, it's pretty interesting. I think it's it's amazing when you can share your uh, experience and you can grow the the whole group. It's amazing. Great. And on the same, uh, talking about the same thing, we have two questions of, of the audience and one of them has to do with mentorship. And um, she is asking, what's the best way to approach someone I'm interested in asking to be my mentor? So how would you approach someone to be your mentor? What is your suggestion, Gabi? How to approach? Just being very, very frank and honest. No, I think we all immediately connect to that. Someone that, you know, first of all, I think, uh, I would be very respectful, like very, um, what would you say? To have somebody have the courage to go and reach to someone, I already, that already has won me completely the respect for that person okay. because that takes courage, right? Okay. Um, so that would immediately make me want to help and make me want to be that person's mentor. So no, don't be afraid of asking. Yeah. And the last question is, any suggestions on how, as a woman, I can get into studio production, tour managing, and other roles that are not on stage or in the office to further explore my love of music? I would say attend events. Um, sign up for these uh, women in music and she is in music and all these groups um, where they do have um, events and um, and opportunities for people to network um, always tell people who you are and what you do um, and try to come up with you know co-writing sessions or co-production sessions or ask to be a uh, observer in, in some sessions as you start meeting people um, if you if you write go to your society we have things also there uh, a lot of events that can help 
Yeah, and she and music is great because that there you have a lot of information that uh, share you share with everyone. So there you can, it's a, a good database to 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 get information and people, and, and make connections. I think it's important to make connections. You know, you know, uh, send emails, LinkedIn. I think it's a good point because I heard that uh, that it's a possibility of being mentored or have connections and connect people, expand your borders, right? Sometimes I think we, 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 we focus on the, the, the people that you already know. And I think it's important to expand uh, your connections. Yeah, I think that it takes a lot of, of, of courage, uh, as Gabby said, and I think that, uh, as Maria said, that she answered that LinkedIn uh, exactly. question. Exactly. So that that's really it's amazing. It gives you oh uh, that could be that is possible. So now, and by the uh, way, Laura, if I can add of that because I, I thought the the story was interesting. She wrote to every single one of the women that were in like the women in music from Billboard, and she got answers from two of them. But but the thing is, two of them answer. So it's not that I'm encouraging everybody to start reaching out to whomever you see in a list, but you <laughs> never know who will answer. Of course. So it, you need to try. You need to look for the opportunity and be for the lookout because more and more things are changing. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of companies, us included, that are working on initiatives to make sure those type of roles have a lot more, you know, diversity and inclusion. And we are giving more opportunities to groups that are underrepresented. So, so I think you will see a lot more activity in the future, but you need to be looking for those opportunities. Like you, and, and, and you need to make sure that when that opportunity presents itself, you are in the right place at the right time so so be be very connected be on the lookout so so you can take advantage of it what gabby said no don't be afraid to ask yep yeah. no, no, ya lo tenés. Mm -hmm. no el no ya lo tenés el no ya lo tienes exactly. exactly. you have nothing to lose yeah yeah so uh, first of all thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, for this conversation this was amazing uh, i don't know if someone wants to add something to it i'd like to to uh, say some bullet points of what of, of what we have been discussing which is i think it's great to uh, give us a, a, an idea of what we all uh, agree on and it's getting the opportunity taking the opportunity training working hard networking collaboration, empathy, loyalty, as uh, what uh, Sandra said, to be firm, diversity, passion, and visibility. I think that with, if we can do all this, we are, we are great. So thank you very much. And uh, if you want to round up um, each one with a small este, final, yeah, I would like to add to all that wonderful list, uh, have compassion for yourself. Um, I think as women, they are putting us under this pressure of you have to be a great executive and you have to be an amazing mother and you have to be an amazing wife and you can do everything. No, you can't. You can try <laughs> to do it the best way possible and hope that the ball that you drop is not that important. So I think be compassionate with yourself and enjoy the ride. Oh my gosh, so important what you said, Gabby, <laughs> because all the time we are pushing, pushing, pushing on us first, right? Because yeah. we should be perfect, right? No. In everything, but, but we are good. Right, and and this is really important. And I would, you know, thank you so much, you know, for the invitation, for being here, for this amazing discussion. And uh, I would include passion for what we do. You know, it's much easier because the hard worker, uh, we are hard workers. We we do everything with, you know, with so hard work and then everything, but with passion. If you really like what you do. 
is a little bit easier. Yeah. Well, I thank want you. to thank uh, thank you all. I, I have enjoyed it very, very much. I just hope that we can meet together and have some wine <laughs> very soon. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I in for that. I know each other, but I don't know you personally, so I hope to meet you in person. Thank you very much. <laughs> Maria, I would, I would oh, sorry. no, Gaby. Gabriel. Perdón, Gaby. Perdón, Gaby. Okay. I would just say, you know, you can uh, follow your dream. You can get to where you want to be. Um, just love yourself in the process. Take care of yourself as you go. Um, there are going to be a lot of no's and a lot of, you know, uh, issues around around your career and around your your growth. But you can overcome it. You know, just take it slow. Take it a day at a time. But take care of yourself. That is very important. Don't don't push yourself. Yes. And and following on what Gabriela is saying, I think self care is so important. And to me, it starts with self talk. How do you talk to yourself? Are you your best friend? Are you nurturing? Are you taking care of yourself with that internal conversation? Because that helps you. Like that will lift yourself or it will really push you to the ground. So, so pay attention to what you're thinking and, and how you are talking to yourself. I think that's that's very critical with, with what has happened with the pandemic. We know that women have been disproportionately affected. Uh, and you know, some of the estimations is women in the workplace will not be at the same level until 2024. So we need to make sure that uh, we are being kind to ourselves. But but I would also say uh, that if all of us, we are women in positions of power, let, let's try to do whatever we can to try to make that time frame a little bit shorter. Let, let's make it a priority to help women come back into the workplace and, and fix the impact of what this pandemic has caused for them. Thank, thank you very much, Maria. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, thank you, you everybody. for thank this you. space. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Bye. Bye-bye. Have thank a great you. day.